Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a new pattern. I don't know what it's called yet. It probably has a name, but it's new to me and someone came in the shop and explained it to me a little bit. So we're going to try it out. These are the fabrics we're going to use. I'm going to make jelly roll strips out of all of these really bright cave facet and free spirit fabrics. And then we're going to take those and make half square triangles with the strip units and with this bright grunge. So let's get started. All I need from the grunge is some 10 inch squares. So these would be the same squares you would get if you had a layer cake. And I'm going to cut them right off of the bolt here. I need 16 of the 10 inch squares. I'm going to get Matt to cut my two and a half inch strips for me. But since I already have these laid out in the order I want them in, I'm going to take a picture of each stack on my phone so that if they get mixed up, I will know what order I want to use them in. And I do that a lot of times when I'm picking out fabrics and I, I like the layout. Take a picture, then you don't have to remember. Here's some of the strips that Matt cut. These are five that I had stacked up and this is the order I'm going to sew them in. So we're going to make a strip unit. We're just going to sew these side by side, quarter inch seam. And we're gonna use a pretty small stitch length because we're going to cut these units after they're sewn. So I always like to use a small stitch here. So I've got probably 12 stitches per inch. So don't stretch either one, just put the edges even Nothing stretched and sew right along the edge. Now it helps a lot if you finger press this. Press all the seams to one side. So I use my fingernail, but you can use the pad of your finger. And this just makes the next step when you have to iron the whole strip unit really, really easy. Now grab the next strip stitch it on and keep going so you have five strips in the unit. I have my strip sets sewn together and I like to iron them very carefully. Since I finger press them, they're laying pretty flat, but I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out by hand before I iron it. And I'm even gonna put a ruler up here and make sure that I don't have anything curved before I start ironing. And I can feel that the seam allowances are all facing the same way. So I will iron this with just heat first, then double check down here and make sure we've got it not curving. Sometimes the ends have to be opened up just a little bit more. And when it's straight, then use the steam. Now we have some customers who like to use spray starch and the K facet fabrics, the free spirit fabrics in general, these are really soft. And so if you like to use spray starch, this would be a good group to do that on. So we have people who will spray it severely, then iron it, and that keeps it just a little more stiff. The next step is to cut these strip units into 10 inch widths. I'm going to fold it in half and then I can cut a couple at the same time. And so I'm going to put this on just beyond the 20 inch line and I'm gonna cut it 10 and I'm gonna cut it zero and I will have four pieces, all the same size. Once you have all of your units cut into blocks, we're gonna take one of these 10 inch squares and we're going to put it right sides together on top of this. And you will find that it's it's matching up. It's exactly this right width here, but your patchwork block is probably a little bit wide. If your seams are exactly a quarter inch, then this will come out 10 and a half wide. And this is only 10 and that's OK. We're just going to center this and we'll have a little bit extra and we're going to stitch all the way around the edge. So you can either stitch all the way off the ends. So you can see I'm a quarter inch in from 
the raw edge of the square. So you can either stitch all the way off and start again, or you can pivot, it doesn't matter. Once you have all of your blocks stitched around, it's a good idea to give it a very brief ironing just to make sure that everything is nice and flat. Sometimes when you sew, you, this might get stretched a little, it might get pulled a little, and I just think it makes your blocks more accurate if you give it a quick ironing. You can even do a couple at a time. It's just to make them a little flatter before we cut. Once they're ironed, we're going to come right over to the cutting board. Now I am going to cut this along both diagonals. So I'm going to put my ruler right in the intersection where I stitched, hold it firmly and give it a, a quick cut and then we're going to not move anything and we're going to set it the other way, give it a quick cut. Now, if you are using light colored fabrics, you're probably going to want to trim off this extra back here. For my purposes, I don't need to because this is never going to show through the blue. The last step is to cut off the dog ears, so you don't even need the ruler for this. You are just simply going to cut like this on all four corners. And once we do that, when we open this up, those dog ears are not going to be there. So this is all we're going to have to do. Let me finish the dog ears here. So we're going to have blocks, some of which have stripes that way and some of which have stripes this way. So I'm going to cut up all my blocks like this. Then we are going to put these out on a big table and we're gonna see what kind of secondary patterns we can make. I have a few tips that will help you with the ironing. Even though we've already ironed it, I'm going to give it a steam press right now before I open it up because that steam makes it stick to the board just a little bit. And then when we open this up, we wanna keep this in place because all the edges are biased, so we don't want to be pulling anything like that. I'm just going to peel it open right here, press that down by hand a little bit, make sure those seam allowances are going towards the background, then iron it. So you just want to be a little careful that you don't stretch anything because it will distort. Again, all bias edges are all around the edges, but if you're a little bit careful, press first, Open up and keep this right on the board. They will stay nice and square. I've laid out all the blocks and it's still looking kind of sloppy as it always does until you get all of the blocks stitched together. But I think I'm gonna like this layout. Now, when it's all done, we'll be able to see a little bit of a star there in the middle. That'll be really cool. If you don't like this layout, you can just take four blocks like I've got here and make a bunch of these. That would make a really nice quilt also. But I think I'm gonna like this big blue and the big patchwork. So the only matching I'm gonna have to do is in these four blocks. So I am gonna have to match up the seams there. But everywhere else, all of these ones, I'm not gonna have to match the seams. And I think that's gonna make it stitch up really fast. So I'm gonna stitch everything together. I'm probably going to put one or two borders on and then we'll get it quilted and I will show you what it looks like. Before I get the quilt finished, I wanna give you a few tips about sewing your rows together and then sewing the rows into the quilt. I found that it's best if you make a row and then iron that row. Don't wait till you're all done. And I'm gonna work with half the quilt at a time. So I've got this half already stitched together and a couple rows here. So I'm gonna stitch this row onto here. 
So you want to just be real careful that you match your intersections and you don't stretch it too much because it's all on the bias. So I'm gonna stitch this up and then I'm gonna show you how to iron it. Now, I'm not going to finger press this seam open. I'm not even going to open it right now. We're gonna take it right over to the ironing board. Now I'm going to lay this on here and I'm going to put it parallel to the bottom of my board and just kind of pat it into shape. And I'm going to iron this seam that I just did flat because it can stretch a little as you sew because it's all bias. Now just carefully open this up and just press away a little bit, but you don't want to stretch things. It's real easy to stretch it, so just smooth it away a little bit. And then start ironing, but iron in the direction of the grain, which is diagonals. Because that way you won't stretch the fabrics out of shape. So I'm ironing it open, but I'm going with the straight grain. Once you get it pretty flat, you can steam it. But again, go in the direction of the straight grains of the fabric. If you stretch this sideways or that way, you can really distort the fabrics. It's really hard to get them laying flat again. Here's our really fun quilt. All of the K facet quilts we make, they're always fun. So we're calling this Mirage because you can see a star here if you look, but if you look away, it kind of hides. It's a really, really fun pattern. It went really fast. Now, because the whole quilt is on the bias, you want to be careful when you do your borders here. You want to measure your patchwork exactly and cut your border to that size before you stitch it on. Once you've got this border on, you can go ahead and stitch your outside border in however is easiest for you. I normally don't measure it, I just sew it on. But for this one, you've got to measure it because this will stretch. The patchwork turned out, it's about 49 inches. And I used a one and three quarters inch cut size for this little border and then a five inch cut for the outside. So the whole quilt turned out about 61 inches. So it was really easy to make, 20 jelly roll strips, 16 layer cake squares, really a ton of fun to make. Now, I used an overall kind of tight pattern to quilt it. It's called paint splatters, and that's an Anne Bright design. And I've got feathers on the backside. That's really, really fun. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the Mirage quilt. Now, if you have quilts you would like to see us make, be sure to let us know in the comments. We have a long list, but we're trying to get to all of them. Happy quilting.